spiritual ventriloquism you are listening to dummy himself well while everybody was preparing for the national day of mourning <laughs> thanksgiving a federal judge in Detroit, Michigan, took a sledgehammer to a 22-year-old congressional law declaring it unconstitutional along the lines of states' rights. Now, states' rights uh, issues have been going on between the federal government and the states for, gosh, <laughs> ever since the Civil War, um, perhaps even earlier. Uh, but this was a historic case. This 22-year-old congressional law regarded uh, the issue of feminine genital mutilation uh, or female circumcision. Uh, apparently, there were a couple of clinics in Detroit, Michigan, uh, and a couple of doctors and about nine uh, young girls under the age of 18 uh, and four mothers, probably, that were involved in this. Uh, they all they came from a hoodie. Islamic sect uh, in India, uh, and then just just for uh, you know uh, for your information, uh, fem female genital mutilation or female circumcision is illegal in most Islamic states. Uh, however, uh, you know it's kind of like Afghanistan. You know, if you commit an act of homosexuality and you're discovered in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, you will get the death penalty. But Islamic converts in Afghanistan have retained their old homosexual ways, uh, and but yet they, you know, have you know they've adopted this new religion of Islam, but they've refused to give up their old customs. Isn't that something? <laughs> Sounds familiar. Well, anyway, uh, the judge uh, ruled. Judge Friedman ruled that as distasteful as the decision may seem, it was the right decision. Uh, I heartily agree with him. I have to. Uh, it's a sad case uh, because, uh, you know, there's nothing in the Bible that talks about female genital mutilation. However, uh, I think this judge also was uh, saw uh, something coming down the road with maybe a push, uh, saw the potential of this suit should prosecutions go forward and convictions be made. Uh, that uh, later on someone could bring uh, a male circumcision uh, case forward and then the child be declared, you know, a victim of some form of child abuse, the, the boy. So Jews and Israelites, as well as others, even secular parents, uh, would now be facing criminal exposure, at least on a federal level, uh, should they uh, choose to uh, circumcise their sons, uh, anyone that's under the age of 18, obviously. Uh, so uh, anyway, there, you know, and Brother Chris said last night, he told me that there are people putting up billboards around hospitals in northern Kentucky uh, telling people that, you know, circumcision is child abuse, uh, that, you know, you shouldn't circumcise your sons you know, which the Bible clearly teaches circumcision in the Torah. Uh, Christians may or may not elect to do it. Usually Christians that do have their children circumcised, they do it in a hospital in a secular fashion, uh, and it's for hygienic reasons. There's no hygienic reasons given in the Bible for circumcision. And if it was just the issue of hygiene alone, then you would probably better just to teach your child how to properly, uh, you know, keep himself clean or whatever. But the issue with circumcision from a biblical standpoint is covenantal. Uh, and for uh, the, it was widely practiced, not just among the Hebrews, but it was practiced among other cultures. The Egyptians, for one, uh, practice circumcision. Uh, for what the reasons were, I don't know whether it was covenantal and or hygienic. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, uh, should these people have been prosecuted, uh, they would now have a, uh, way, a federal decision in place in which they could go after people who want to circumcise their male children. Uh, so I think this judge saw some of this and uh, probably made the decision Obviously, along states' rights, he declared that the co Congress overstepped its legal authority uh, and outside the bounds of the Constitution by encroaching and not allowing states to form their own laws and criminal 
procedures and prosecutions for uh, the, such a case. Um, so anyway, there was an absence of a Michigan law at the time, and that's why this went to a federal court. And I was wondering why it went to a federal court, not a state venue. 27 states, including Michigan now, have uh, laws on the books uh, against female genital mutilation, which varies in scope. Sometimes it's just a little nick, like a, an adult conversion to Judaism uh, that may have already been circumcised in a secular fashion in the hospital, uh, and or uh, including and maybe even a removal of the entire genit, you know, uh, folds of skin, labia, clitoral hood, and things like that is uh, in the extreme. Uh, <clears throat> Pardon me. Anyway, I just got done spreading straw on the garlic. So anyway, uh, I think the judge made a great decision. I think he headed uh, a, a monster off at the pass. And personally, these godlike pricks in Congress, I am so glad that a federal judge finally handed them their ass. These people act like there are gods or something. They act as if they are the all-knowing, all-seeing guardians and, or, and wards over us common people. Uh, and they have forgotten that they are the public servants and we are the uh, ones being served. So uh, personally, I am glad that uh, our servants have finally been punished by a federal judge uh, for their uh, disobedience to their masters. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm glad. I'm, I'm really happy about that. It's a sad case. Uh, I think the practice uh, in that fashion as far as involving girls is ridiculous uh, and has no health uh, benefits or otherwise. So anyway, uh, I think it was a great decision by Judge Friedman, and uh, I hope that this decision stands or if it's appealed, that is upheld at the next two levels if it goes there. So anyway, now, as for now, all charges have been dropped against these people. And now there is no federal law, as it stands right now, that is constitutional where a person can be brought up on charges for uh, female genital mutilation or anything uh, along those lines. So, uh, again... Do I think there should be a law against that? Yes, I do. I think there should be a law against female genital mutilation. But there are also others out there who think there should be a law against male genital mutilation or male circumcision. And they're, if they are going to try to, to equate that it's child abuse on one side, they're going to say tit for tat. It's child abuse on the other side. So you have a jujur thing working here. Uh, and... Uh, that's the push uh, by these godless, nameless, faceless liberals that wish to try to stir up the cart uh, or turn overturn the apple cart and uh, begin to legislate uh, from their own paradigm of morality and impose their minority views uh, on the American people as a whole. If anything I said is upsetting to you, I always say you better bring a life jacket next time. Shalom. Have a good day.